So if you ever played a bass line and you're not 100% confident where each rhythm is accurately placed within the beats of the bar. Well stick around because today I'm going to show you a super simple but effective exercise you can use to develop rock solid time so drummers and other musicians will love to play with you. Hey it's Jazz here from the bassmastermind.com and today I want to show you a really cool exercise that I like to call switching gears. Now there are really three steps in being able to effectively implement this exercise into your practice routine and at the end of the video I'll show you a couple of things that you should be thinking about when practicing the exercise and a couple of things to watch out for and some common mistakes. So step one is actually understanding the three types of subdivision grids and what this is going to do is give you incredible internal time if you really understand these three different types of subdivision division grids. So the first subdivision grid is an eighth note grid. And what that means is if we take a bar of 4-4, four, four, everything today is going to be in 4-4. Four, four. So if we take the four beats of the bar and we actually divide them in half, so we have one and, then two and, three and, four and. So we've taken the four beats and we just divided them in half. And that is the eighth note grid. And the second subdivision grid we're going to look at today is the 16th note grid. And all that is, is taking the four beats of the bar and it's dividing them down into four equal units. So we have one E ander, two E ander, three E ander, four E ander. And the final subdivision grid is the triplet grid. And that's where we take these four beats of the bar in four, four. And we divide the beats down into three equal units. And how we count this is one ander, two ander, three ander, four ander. Now I just threw a load of information at you there and I don't expect you to go away and remember it all. So what I've actually done is created a free PDF worksheet that you can download below this video. The link is in the description. Everything is organized and color coded and all the rhythms are matched with their corresponding subdivision grids. So you can go and download that for free. So step two is to play the rhythm and count the corresponding subdivision grid out loud. So there are actually seven rhythms in the PDF worksheet that I'm giving you, but let's just take three of these rhythms for this video. We're gonna take eighth notes, triplets, and 16th notes. So for the eighth notes, we're gonna use the eighth note grid. For the triplets, we'll use the triplet grid. For the 16th notes, we're gonna use the 16th note subdivision grid. So how I would suggest practicing this exercise is to get your foot and tap all four beats of the bar. So one, two, three, four. And then while you're doing that, you actually say the subdivision grid out loud, depending on what rhythm you're playing. So say eighth notes, we say, one and two and three and four and and then we would actually play the rhythm on bass i'm just going to take a d fifth fret of the a string so let's put everything together i'll count four in and then i'll show you the exercise so one two three four one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a one e and a two e and a three now, before I move on to step three, which is a more advanced version of this exercise, I just want to share with you a couple of very common mistakes that people make when they're trying to do this for the first time, and also a couple of things to be thinking about while you're playing this exercise. So the goal is we want to make the transitions between the different rhythms as smooth as possible. That's the really key important bit that you should be focusing on. The transition between say eighth notes to triplets or triplets to 16th notes. It's the first few notes of the transition that will potentially trip you up. It's kind of like when you go to drive a manual car and you want to make the transitions between the gears as smooth as possible so you don't jolt the car forward it's the same when you transition between rhythms. We don't want to slow down, we don't want to speed up, and we don't want to accent certain notes. We just want things perfectly aligned within the grid. And one more important thing is find the transition or the rhythms that you're weakest on. So when you go through the PDF worksheet that I've included, for me, the quarter note triplets to 16th notes, that's my weakest transition, going from quarter note triplets to 16th notes. So what I did is just loop those two rhythms and I actually recorded myself. And that's kind of my bonus tip for today is doing exactly what I'm doing, whether it's your iPhone, whether it's a camera. The most important thing is to be able to record yourself so you can listen back and you can really analyze and be 
kind of harsh with yourself if you're actually nailing the correct rhythm and correct subdivision grid. So the third step is a more advanced step, but before I show you that exercise, I just wanna say don't let the simplicity of this exercise fool you because these are the sort of fundamental exercises that are really gonna improve your internal time so we can be more confident when we turn up to a session, like say Nathan East would turn up and he would absolutely nail where the rhythms are. He would also make it feel good. After you know exactly where the notes are and what subdivision grid you're using and where the rhythms are accurately placed, within the beats of the bar, that's when you can go and do some, I don't know, Pino Palladino, like D'Angelo stuff and start playing behind the beat or ahead of the beat. But you can't really do it the other way around. You need to know where the beats are and then you can start kind of messing around and making it feel really good as well. So the third step is actually to play this exercise with the metronome only on beat one. So instead of having the metronome clicking on all four beats, you set the metronome, so if you're gonna play at 120, you would set it to 30 BPM. So you would essentially take the tempo that you're playing, the BPM you're playing, and then you would divide it by four, and that would give you the BPM that you should set your metronome, so the metronome is clicking only on the first beat of the bar. When you go to play this exercise, make it kind of musical, like you're almost playing a walking bass, or if you're just playing quarter notes, for example, Make those quarter notes really fat and long. And just make sure you do record yourself because that's what's really gonna help you when it comes to playing live and playing with other musicians. If you can really nail this exercise, drummers will absolutely love to play with you because they know you have rock solid internal time. So make sure to download the free PDF I've specifically designed for this lesson. You can go through the three steps and I think there's seven rhythms there, all color coded with the corresponding subdivision grid. And in next week's video, I'll actually be showing how to find the key of a song on bass in less than 10 seconds. So subscribe, hit the notification bell. Have an awesome day and I'll see you next week.